Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Private Investigator Advice, and this is a podcast. It's going to be episode 73. It's going to be a lot of me sitting uh, and talking to the camera, and maybe we'll have some pictures right here. Uh, but uh, yeah, episode 73. Um, so let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be about um, how to deal with reckless or fast driving individuals uh, you are following uh, during a surveillance. Um, and the reason for this topic is it was, uh, uh, the qu a question was given to me on, on a video that I had made, uh, and they wanted my thoughts on, on this particular topic. Um, and, and so I, I wrote an article about it and now I'm doing a podcast and video about it. Um, so, um, you know, just, just simply put, there's going to be a lot of different, um, uh, scenarios that, uh, you know, a, a private investigator is going to go through, and this is just one of those, you know, trials and, you know, tribulations of a surveillance, right? It's just, it's just one of those struggles that we're going to have to deal with. And so, uh, anyways, um, yeah, that's, that's just what we're going to be discussing today. Uh, but before we get into that, we're going to go ahead and talk to, talk about, uh, that this episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible has like a bajillion, uh, books out there. Um, that are audible, you can, uh, or uh, audio books rather, and you, you can hear them on your phone or your tablet. Um, and I, I have talked about this before and I still recommend it to this day. Um, and so they get, what they do is they, you sign up, they give you a free book and you have this 30 day trial. And if you decide that you don't want to continue on, you get to keep the book for free and that's it. And so since, since you can do that, um, by the way, you can go there by going to audible, trial.com forward slash uh, PIA and um, that'll let them know that you were recommended by the Prime Investigator Advice podcast. But real quick before I end this uh, little ad here, I uh, got a new book on here. I, I've almost finished it in like like technically two days. Um, not that it's a short book, but I just was just really listening through it. Um, it's called Lie Spotting and um, I'd have to say, like, um, I was really impressed by the book. It covers a, a, a lot of different things, um, and uh, uh, it's just something you you want to check out. It's called Lie Spotting. Um, I was trying to bring it up here. I, I forgot to bring it up before I started this podcast. But, um, um, yeah, check it out. Um, if, if any free book you're going to get, if you're interested in um, – uh, the topic of, you know, seeing if there's deception in, in, a, in a conversation or, you know, an interview for that matter, when you're interviewing people, uh, you want to, you want to pick that up, um, and just, and just listen to it. Uh, maybe you're a reader, maybe just go get it on, on Amazon, go buy it off of there, but okay, that is it. So again, uh, audible trial, uh, dot com forward slash PIA to, uh, go ahead and get your free book. Okay. So, um, uh, in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of my surveillance, uh, or in my, uh, my career, um, I came from this, this, uh, this culture, uh, and mentality of, um, you were to basically follow a subject no matter what, like you, you, you did whatever you could without, you know, killing yourself you know you just you just it was a lot of competition and i'm, and I'm kind of being extreme there but it, it was a lot of competition and it's a lot of pressure and we'll get into that in a second but uh you know the the people that trained me these are good people right but the people that trained me um would provide examples of doing things that are illegal um you know running through red lights um speeding uh doing specific type of turns um uh, passing vehicles, um, uh, b b the speeding is kind of associated to that. Um, but anyways, um, it was all in the context of, you know, do this all while being safe. And, um, you know, but the problem was, is if, if you, if you got a ticket, no one's going to pay for that, but, but me, right? Like that, that was, that was what was going to happen. Um, if, if, you know, I had, my tint was too dark. Um, and well, it usually was, um, you know, you could get a ticket for that. I I've been very fortunate through all my years now. I've never had a ticket for tint, but I've literally watched people that I've worked with on a two man surveillance, get pulled over and get tickets for tent, especially when I was in California. Um, uh, so, you know, so anyways, uh, it, you know, it, so speeding, you're going to get tickets. Anything you do illegal, you're going to get tickets right if a cop catches you. Um, if, you know, you do something stupid, you're driving stupid to stay with somebody and you get into an accident, you hurt somebody, 
you know, uh, they don't have to deal with that. The company doesn't deal with that. You, you do. You have to deal with, you know, the fact that you actually hurt somebody, right? Or, or that you've damaged their, their personal property. You now you've damaged your property. Um, and, and just remember, like these companies that you work for, they're not going to pay for that. And if you're your own company, you're the only one that's responsible for that. No one else has to um, bear bear that responsibility. Just you. So that's kind of the. Uh, the context of what we're going to get into today, this is kind of my mentality on it, um, and, and um, yeah, we're just going to go from there. So, uh, you know, the, going back to what I was telling you earlier, guys, there's, there is this pressure in this industry, um, and, uh, the, you know, for you, there's pressure financially, right? And I've talked about this kind of a pressure before. You, you know, you want to be billable. You want to... Um, you want to make money, and if you're losing people all the time, you're not going to make money, right? And so, that's that pressure for you. You got to make money. And then there's the pressure from the company you work for, right? There's this pressure where they're keeping track of you. They're keeping track of uh, all the stuff you're doing. They're keeping track of your burns. They're keeping track of your billable time. They're uh, they're keeping track of uh, you losing people um, because that's what they do that's how they find out if you are efficient or not or, or a good investigator at least that's how they they define it sometimes not that i agree with all that and that's for another podcast that i'll have soon but um anyways th- so there's that pressure and and you know they will have talks with you if they feel like uh, that, that that's happening more than not like losing people and, and getting burned and then there's the client expectations and so if you're <clears throat> um if you're, uh, you, you know, working for somebody, uh, you still might have to talk to the client, the insurance company, or whoever that is for you. And they, if they've never been into the industry of investigations, right, uh, and doing surveillance, they really, I mean, you could tell them, like, here, these are my obstacles. Um, but they really don't have a true understanding of, of what you have to go through um, and all the different things. Not just the following person, but all the other things involved and, um, and all the other vehicles that get in your way. And, you know, not so there's, you know. Just too many things to to, to talk, but um, you have that pressure with them. Like, hey, you want to do a good job. Uh, you want to keep their, you know, keep working. You want to keep them happy, so you they keep giving you assignments, whether you're um, working for somebody or on yourself. You, you know, you always want to do a good job. So there's there's that, and then also there's this there's this morale crusher. Um, just you know, for for you as an investigator, um, that that happens to you. Uh, happens to a lot of people, you know, sometimes you lose a lot of people, right? Let's just say there's this, you know, this case you're working or several cases where you're just getting unlucky and, or, uh, and you just keep losing them. So then, then you just kind of like, uh, the stress of all this keeps ha- coming on top of you and it affects your confidence. And, uh, that could be a real slippery slope going down there when, you know, when nothing seems to be going right. And, um, you know, you're in that kind of a situation. Trust me, I've been in it. So that's where that comes from. So, um, so then, so that's kind of like the pressure that we're all dealing with when, when all these scenarios are happening, right? When we're having fast driving individuals or we're having, uh, people who are driving reckless. So, um, you know, fast drivers the, you know, generally speaking, of course, there's always going to be something different, but I'm just going to, I only wanted to put them in the two categories because that's typically what's well, maybe some kind of combine the situations where they're fast and reckless. But <clears throat> just for the sake of this podcast, I'm going to separate them. Um, so fast driving individuals. So a lot, some people just might be on the freeway, uh, the speed limit 60 miles an hour. They're going 80, and they're the only one going 80 or above, right? Like no, the other traffic isn't going that that fast, and so you have that challenge. Uh, sometimes the uh, individual you're following will jump in the carpool lane and um and they don't ha- they don't have the right to be there but they're there and and now that presents a challenge to you because now they're being able to go faster than everybody else in traffic sometimes um uh in, on the freeway they're racing through traffic and though it might be congested they're just zipping through zipping through and it thinks you know they're they're 30 cars ahead of you and it, you know there's not much you can do about it to stay with them um and then they also do that in town some people just kind of race through in town and they've always got to um you know, like they're like, you know, there's just these drivers out there that they, they always have to be in front of somebody or they can't go the speed limit. Right. They can't uh, they can't do that. They always have to be going a little bit faster than that. Um, so just to provide some kind of options for that. Right. This is 
I'm never going to tell you to break the law. Like I, I couldn't in good conscience sit here on a podcast and say, you know, uh, you know, you, oh, you got to do this you, or you got to do that. Um, wh- whatever you do, no matter what's said going forward, like you always uh, you do what's best for you. Right. But I would always stress being safe. Like I, I could never tell you to do something um, illegal because in the, in the bigger picture, um, like I mentioned earlier, the things that could possibly happen, it's just financially, it's not worth it. Uh, you know, for your health wise or somebody else's health wise, it's not worth it. So, um, so anyway, so here's some options for some of those situations. So, you, you know, if someone's going 20 miles over the speed limit, you could try to go as fast as them, right? You could try to stay that, that fast, but you're also, you know, potentially setting yourself up to get that ticket. And so, you, you, you know, that's the, or, 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 you know, something could happen and you could hurt somebody, but keep that in mind. You can go a little bit over the speed limit, right? That's kind of like your other option. Like, okay, they're going 80. I'm going to go 68, 70. I'm going to try to stay with them the best I can. A lot of times that's kind of where I fit in. Like, um, I'm not going to, um, for me personally, I'm going to be safe as much as I can about that. So if, if something seems unsafe, I might, I might back off uh, on following them. But um, if they're going like 80, 85 miles an hour, I probably will st- go up to 70. That's probably what I would do um, personally. Um, this is this is me. This is what I would do. Just being truthful with you guys, but uh, I would um, uh, just keep the eye, eye on the best of them that I can, and hopefully get get them if they're on the freeway. Just be able to at least see them get off the freeway, so I can, you know, follow them into town. It might be a little bit easier. Um, or you know, maybe you don't. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm not gonna. I can't do that. Right? That's just unsafe. And then you go, you know, you're basically doing the speed limit, and if you lose them, you lose them. And so, like I said, I'm not going to tell you to do anything unsafe. I'm just kind of telling you what what I what I would do, what I do. Um, I mean, I can actually tell you there's there's been instances recently where the person I'm following, like they're just like crazy fast, like and and I'm I've got to tell the client like. Yeah, I can't do that. Like, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to follow them like that. I can't do that. And so, so we're in a bad situation here. Like, um, either they know they're being followed or they um, are just really jerk drivers, right? So that's kind of, that's kind of the conversation I have with them. And, and we went over some different options to kind of remedy it. And, uh, you know, I don't, that's not just it. Like, Oh, I'm sorry. I can't follow them. Well, too bad. You know, we, we definitely worked out some different options and tried to figure some things out, but, um, okay. So that's where we at here. So I think the moral of the story of, of, of speeding and, and chasing someone down, um, when they're going fast, um, you know, it's going to be a personal decision for you. You really just just think of the consequences should something happen because um, you were breaking the law or doing something illegal uh, or dri- or driving re- uh, in a manner that would be unsafe to follow somebody. Um, there's tickets and there's accidents, and um, I don't think anybody wants either of those to happen. So then we kind of go into the category of erratic driver, and and that can fit in also to the speeding driver, like I said before. Um, this is the person you know that makes last minute turns or lane changes. Um, the person might make multiple u turns. Um, they cut through parking lot areas. Um, they uh, they go slow and then they go fast. Uh, they run through red lights or just always seem to be making it through the yellow at the last second, right? Like it turns red while they're in the intersection. Um, and so uh, you know, you, I always say in like these scenarios, like when someone's driving, um, when someone's driving like out of the norm, in my mind, out of the norm, right? Like that, uh, in my mind, I'm always thinking like, okay, this person's going to, you know, use their blinker. Um, it's not going to make excessive U-turns, um, especially in like in a town that they know. Um, and they're not going to speed unnecessarily. And um, that that's kind of my, my typical driver in my brain. Um but you got to ask yourself, even even with the previous topic of going just too fast, like, uh, is there any reason why you would be burned? Like, before we even get into, like, different tactics and stuff, so think about it. Like, if someone's driving that way, is there any reason that they would be on to you? And this kind of comes back into be kind of being aware of your situation. Um, did you do something, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Did you do something on this event? Did you pretext the house? Did you were you walking around the neighborhood pretexting? Um, you know, how close are you to the the house? Did anybody see you walk back to your vehicle when you're pretext? You know, is that a, is that a situation that maybe happened? Were you confronted? The police come and talk to you that day. Um, has the case been worked before? Um, is there any reason why you know anybody would? be driving uh, in an untyp- untypical manner. So that's what I always ask myself before I, you know, I even re, you know, I, I evaluate the case, like, and I look at it like this case, this case, this case is really old. Like maybe the, the insurance, like for me, the insurance company didn't, maybe they didn't say anything. Maybe they didn't want to tell me that that had been worked before, but if it had, you know, if it's, if, if I'm working a surveillance where this insurance claim is like seven years old, there's a good chance that it's been worked before by somebody else. Uh, even if they don't tell you that, there's a good chance. And so, um, you know, maybe they do tell you and now you know. Maybe, oh, okay, well, I don't know what the other guy did, so maybe that's what's going on. So that could be in your mind. Just just things to think about. So um, uh, sometimes, oh, sometimes the people, when they're driving erratically, they'll uh, make lane changes at the last minute. And if you're on the freeway, uh, maybe it's that last second jump off the freeway that'll happen. Um uh, if they're uh, if they're making multiple U-turns, um, I, I used to, I like to watch them. Like I'm, if they're making a U-turn, like I'm I'm depending where I am in the traffic, I'm watching them to see what they're doing. Are they looking at me? Are they trying to see inside my car? Um, are you know are they you know occupied with something else? Like does it look like they're even interested in me? I always pay attention to that. Um, but with that being said, so let's just talk about the U-turns real quick. If someone does make a U-turn, follow them. You need to keep following them. Um, if you're burned, then you're burned. And, um, it might be worth, you know, finding out at that point, you know, like, Hey, okay, I'll follow them again. I'll stay with them if you can. Um, and if they make another U-turn, I, if you can make another U-turn, um, um, you know, you, you have to see the situation. I can't, uh, tell you what every situation is going to be like. Um, but yeah, either you could be burned or they could just be lost. That could just be, they're just looking, you know, especially if they're not in their town, they might be looking for an address. And sometimes, um, when, uh, when I'm following somebody, I try not to jump to conclusions right away because sometimes so many times where I've like, Oh man, I'm so burned and I've stayed with them. I'm like, I just need some confirmation. Let them, you know, give me the finger or yell at me or something. Um, and then they don't. It's like they were in some other town and they were looking for like a doctor's office that they'd never been to before uh, or something like that. And so they, you know, were doing U-turns and they were just lost and they just didn't know where the address was. And then my uh, anxiety level drops dramatically and I continue on with the surveillance. <laughs> So that's that's something that you got to try to figure out when this is all happening. Like, um, you know, I, you can't really account for that kind of stuff when people are are driving erratic all the time. But it, it's a consideration. So a lot of times, like I've in my brain, I've originally jumped to a conclusion that, um, you know, they're 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 onto me, and then in reality, they just you know we're taking a shortcut somewhere. You know, especially you know when you're following people in towns. You know, everybody's taking this main road, and, and then your person takes back roads. Um, and it builds a little anxiety for, for some investigators. Like, why are they going this way? Nobody else is going this way. Um, and so um, it could it could mess with you a little bit. Um, but uh, if um, another scenario might be if someone pulls onto the side of the road, um, and, and when you have to pass them, right? Mother would be on, if it happens on the freeway, you're you might be burned but if it was on the main road again because they could be lost they could be uh, maybe they picked up the phone now they're on the phone um uh, you know you just you just don't know right away um uh, if somebody uh, happens to be like if they're making lights a lot and you're not um th- that could be two things again they could just be jerk drivers or you need to kind of anticipate okay this is kind of how they drive i know that they're going to run these and so you need to be a little bit closer to them, especially in town when there's a lot of stoplights. If you can put yourself directly behind them, um, then that'll prevent you from you know losing them because they keep making these lights that you're never going to make unless you're right behind them. So um, take that into consideration. And if somebody does blow a red light, like just blatantly, then then yeah, I would cut it off and just let that go. So I think a lot of the stuff is there's. Um, 
there's there's always some context, you know, uh, in regards to following people. Um, sometimes, you know, of course, you do, you have to figure that out, of course. And and I'm trying to lay these things out in a in order uh, for you to stay with me on this. But um, uh, you know, if if someone starts driving erratically, I personally I think, okay, did I do something to screw this up? Um, and then I pay attention a great deal um, to see if if uh, you know if they're pulling over or doing things where I can see like their reaction to things. Um, it could be an indicator that I am burned, um, uh, or they could be on their phone looking at a map or something. You know, you just don't you just don't know to kind of investigate that a little bit more. Um, uh, it, so if someone is driving super erratic and you're burned, you just you're gonna let them go, right? You're not gonna pursue that anymore. Uh, but just give your chance to uh, give yourself a chance. Always being safe doing this, but give yourself a chance to figure out if, if um, you know they're they're doing it because that's just how they drive, or it's a specific situation where they're lost, uh, or or you're burned. Um, every situation is going to be different, and I wish I, I mean the only way I could kind of provide some advice on every specific situation was to be given a specific scenario. Um, uh, when it all is said and done. You know, always be safe. Um, I, I personally don't do, I won't do anything that's unsafe. And, I, and if that sacrifices a, a me not following somebody, then so be it. Because because I know, you know, the, what could happen is just, just not worth it, right? It's just not worth it. So that's kind of my advice for you guys today. Um, you know, it, you don't want to follow, um, you know, this whole thing was this whole conversation following erratic drivers is you just always do the best you can. And, um, you know, the majority of drivers are not going to be bad drivers. Um, you know, you're going to, the younger kids are going to be a little bit speedier sometimes. Um, the older people are generally speaking are, um, uh, a little slower drivers. Um, and so, you know, when you, when you have, um, uh, when you do enough surveillances, you kind of have, this understanding of kind of what to expect, um, not not from specific people, but just you know what's kind of the norm. And once when, when something's out of the norm, um, you know either you do your best, you you try to put yourself in a situation to not lose them, right? Um, uh, but but always be safe when doing it. Um, and that's really it. It's just um, uh, you know if you take someone's life because you got into an accident following somebody when you didn't have to be. Um, doing that when you didn't have to be speeding or driving erratic yourself to stay with somebody, um, you're going to feel horrible. It's going to be horrible for you, uh, financially and, and, and mentally. So that, that's my perspective on it, guys. Um, so I hope you got something out of this. If you have a specific scenario um, that uh, you know you want discussed, not necessarily. I don't want to. Know, I don't want to know anything about the case itself. Um, I'm, um, but like you know, what would you do in this situation? Let me know. I mean, I, I could give you my best um, my best advice on it that I could, or you know, see if I've been in a, a similar scenario before in the past. Um, but I would love to answer that if that's something you guys um, want to do. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, um, and uh, I'll probably have fun for you next week. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to go to the Pride Investigator Advice uh, website. You can go to piadvice.net. That'll take you there, um, and just go to the contact page, and if you have a question, you can uh, go through there, or you can comment in the in the the video, the video podcast uh, with a specific question or, or comment. Um, if you would also go to iTunes and uh, submit a review should uh, you feel like you, you'd like to, um, you know, uh, give it the, what is it, the, the thumbs up or the five, I don't remember even what it is. Uh, but I love to read those, love uh, when they come in and, and all those um, ratings and comments help other people find the Prime Investigator Advice podcast. Um, so I thank you guys for those who have commented and uh, rated me in the past. Um, and uh, again, I'll see you guys next week uh, and be safe out there. Later. Later.